Welcome to the IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast, episode number 14. Technology marketing explainer videos convey value proposition in less than two minutes. I am your host, Joshua Feinberg, and I'm joined today by Bruce McKenzie, tech video content expert at Two Minute Explainer in New York City. The IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast helps IT channel companies, especially those in IT consulting, managed services and cloud, use inbound marketing and content marketing to attract highly qualified visitors, convert visitors into engaged leads, close sales faster with the right kinds of clients, and delight clients for long-term retention. In this episode, we're going to look at technology marketing explainer videos convey value proposition in less than two minutes. Well, I am here with Bruce McKenzie from Business Information Graphics in New York City. Bruce is better known by his company name, 2MinuteExplainer.com. Bruce is a veteran creative director coming from the offline world, who is a very interesting business and value proposition now specializing in helping Fortune 1000 and, and smaller startup tech companies use relatively short videos to explain difficult technical concepts. Thanks so much for joining me today, Bruce. Glad to have you here. Well, I'm glad to be here. I uh, really like talking about how to make video short. <laughs> so the first question I had is when you first were looking to come up with the name Two Minute Explainer, why Two Minute Explainer as opposed to One Minute Explainer or Three Minute Explainer? Was there some kind of sweet spot behind the two minutes? We, um, we took the explainer idea from Slate Magazine, uh, has this, uh, <coughs> an explainer feature. The two minute we thought up ourselves and it just seemed to, to work. Um, you know, the idea is that if you set yourself a limit, it forces you to concentrate on you know, uh, what you're saying <laughs> into that time. It's like, okay, I only have two minutes. What do we really have to tell people? Um, one minute isn't enough, and three minutes, I mean, I always look at it. If you haven't got somebody's attention by the end of two minutes, what makes you think you're going to get it in three? Because really what you're trying to do with a two-minute explainer is simply get somebody to go on to do the next thing. Uh, that is, you know, it's always, it's always been a kind of an introductory piece. Uh, when we first started out, uh, you know, we... We trademarked, uh, registered the trademark Two Minute Explainer in 2004, and not very many tech companies were using video at all back then. So our marketing plan was we'd go around and look at people's websites, and we're pretty smart. And I'd, I'd read through it. Lauren and my partner would read through what what it said on the front page of their website and say, "Well, I can't understand what they do." So uh, I guess they, you know we should they need help, um, and so we would call people up, and that seemed to work. So two minutes isn't really magic, uh, but on the other hand, it really works. So what I'm curious about is you were a creative director for international paper in the late 1970s to the mid-1980s, and then there's kind of a 20-year period when you left international paper, but web video really was unheard of. If you think about it in the 19. 90, in the uh, late 80s, 1990s, even early 2000s, I imagine a lot of video projects were on VHS originally. Well, they did. You know, you just video is is video, so you use whatever technology is available. Everybody's been watching TV their whole lives. Everybody alive today, um, and that's really it. So you just we were in you know essentially the creative services business when we started the company, and did lots of presentations and wrote speeches and other stuff that PR companies and uh, marketing communications companies do. Um, but we were uh, macromedia developers originally, and you know we were grandfathered as certified macromedia developers. So we'd always been interested in interactive stuff and using um, you know multimedia. So we did CD-ROMs and what everybody did back in not everybody, but you know did back in those days. I, I, I basically started the company because we thought that um, uh, we could we're more interested in business than most of the creative services companies that we dealt with. Uh, my partner and I are 
are both MBAs, and we're kind of like talking to people about their business and how it works and, you know, what we can do to help communicate it better. And when I would talk to the, about the business to creative services firms that I dealt with, it was sort of like, you know, oh, how are we going to win an award with this thing? So, um, you know, but it's, it's, we just look at it as video. For the typical decision maker that you're working with today, what's usually the goal of most of these projects? Is it really just as simple as getting the message across in two minutes, or are there harder metrics that you think they're looking at or that they're trying to convey through how you explain uh, the, their story? I'd say the goal is generally introductory. It's uh, people imagine tend to use video as uh, kind of a, you know, oh, I have to have, as part of my marketing kit, I have to have a video. So I'm going to do a new product introduction or an upgrade or, you know, just there's something new that needs to be explained in a concise way. And that's the, the goal. I don't think that's necessarily the, the best goal today. I think that was the best goal five years ago. I think that um, there are probably more creative ways to think about video now and you know, more you can do with a call to action in a video than you used to be able to do. So coming kind of to the CTA, the call to action, what's, are, are most of the videos that you're doing being used to generate leads? Or are they being used to nurture leads and kind of push them along in the, in the sales process? What's the overriding goal or do you see people doing a little bit of both? I think, I think it's a lot of both. I mean, they all have, it's, it's you know, it's like a, it's TV. So it's, uh, it can be used, you know, people, all of our clients use, put an uh, like an email signature and say, watch our two minute video about X when they're sending out a mailing about X. Or that same video can be shown to a stand up meeting uh, by a salesperson. It can be used as a loop at a trade show or as part of the product introduction at a trade show at a news conference. PR people can, can use it. So a, the two minute video tends to get a lot of different uses, um, but it's I, I, introductory seems to me to be the, you know, what we do most of, and that's where you probably need a, you know, a more professional video uh, than you know, if you're doing something more of a tutorial nature, that's a pretty good thing to do in-house. So that's interesting. So the idea is that because it's the first impression that they're getting of this company, or a relatively early first impression, to spend the budget on something more professional. And as they get a little further along in the process, where they're not necessarily where they're going to be a little more forgiving on production value, that's where an in-house created webinar or something that has a little less polish on it could be equally effective and long absolutely. and presumably longer duration. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, you know, as part of you that if that video is a first impression, it needs to be branded the same as all your other stuff. Uh, but as you get to where you're dealing more one-on-one -on -one with somebody, as you would be in a tutorial, then you would be a little more relaxed and informal. Bruce, how does the conversation usually go with a new potential client? Um, what's the context in which they're usually coming to you? What are they asking for versus what they really need? Are their wants and needs aligned? What what kind of what kind of managing expectations usually goes on in the early stages of a project like this? People are usually just feel like they need a video. Uh, you know, they say, "Well, I need a you know I need a video," and then they'll tell us the reasons they want to use it, which are pretty much the reasons I just gave you. You know, well, I got to go to a trade show. We got to have something that introduces it on our website. We've got to be able to show. Um, uh, analysts, you know, in a very short way. We need something to start meetings, that sort of thing. So they pretty much have to, you know, I often sometimes tell people, gee, you should be selling for us because they come at it with kind of enthusiasm and say, we, we need one of these. Typically, they might have, you know, seen one that we did somewhere else. Or we have a lot of clients that we that follow us from one job to another because people do move around a lot in the business that we're in, which is, you know, technical, mark, you know, IT marketing or technical marketing, um, B2B technology. 
So I'd say the expectations, you know, it's like, well, they, they, want, they know they want a short video. And then it's just a question of how do you make it short? Because people are, you know, people with a, a new, worked on a product, I and mean, a lot of our, our clients are like startups or they, they, they're the people who are involved in the invention of the product that's going into the video. They're proud of it. They want to tell everybody everything about it. And in two minutes, it's, it's, so sometimes you have to say, well, what can you actually do in two minutes? That's another reason that the two-minute you know, um, limit is good. It's, not, it's that it, it's, uh, okay, I've got uh, 260 or so words that can be spoken in that time without sounding like you're talking about an automobile lease or something. Um, and so, I, you know, what words are we going to speak? And I think equally, maybe more important is once we've decided how we're going to tell the stories, what are we going to put up on the screen? You know, what, what are people going to look at uh, that is going to help them, you know, understand why they should be, go to the next step in your sales process? Interesting. So a lot of it sounds like it involves the, the, the planning of the scripting and the copywriting and picking the words really carefully because it's kind of like the post-it note version of what people may come to you where they are just giving tons and tons of source material and you have to kind of whittle it down. But I'm curious about... That's how we do it. I mean, lots of people, you know, I mean, different people have different expectations for video. Some people feel like, well, I, sh you know, I, I can write the script to myself and then I need to hire somebody to turn it into a video, which is okay. That's just not the way we do it. What we like to do, and I think what we're, we're good at, is people come to us and say, a lot of times somebody come to us and say, well, I need five of these things um, because I've got so much to say. And, you know, maybe you, you really don't because you, 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 know, you really want to go on to something different after, this, after an introductory piece. So what people come to us or as I've got a big explained and here are our half a dozen white papers and you know watch these webinars and uh, talk to our salespeople, talk to our sales engineers, talk to our uh, product development people and figure out what we can do effectively in two minutes. That's something that people look to us to do and that's kind of a journalistic skill. Is, uh, well, okay, I've got to fill a column of X number of words, or I've got to, um, you know, I've got, I've got so many column inches on this story I'm going to write. So. What do you see as some of the big mistakes or kind of old wives' tales that people bring to the table that need to be corrected so they don't kind of sabotage the project before it gets started? Old wives' tale? I don't think I've ever heard of an old wives' tale. <laughs> or video. Conventional uh, wisdom that's wrong. No, I don't know. I, I don't, I think that you know, people don't really have any, you know, the only thing, they, they feel like you can get, you need to get more in. Uh, one of the, I guess the biggest mistake is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's trying to start at the beginning. Um, that is, it's like a lot of people in a, in, a, in a presentation that you're standing up in front of somebody and just talking to them, you can set up the problem and you can go back to back in the 1980s we used to do things this way and then it evolved into this and then it, you know it was in the 90s with the era of this and so forth which is um, you know interesting in a stand-up presentation it's like a little history and if you're in the same industry it's oh yeah I remember that but uh, in in our case it's you know if you've only got two minutes you can't spend any time reminiscing or uh, telling people stuff they already know. Um, you, so that, I think that that's the, the thing people have a tendency to do is to expect the story to be told in the same way they would tell it to you if they were just talking to you. You, you have to assume, I think, increasingly that when somebody's watching your video, they kind of know who you are and what you do. That's different from when we started out. You know, they, they're, this is, I guess, the content marketing idea where people are looking for a specific solution and they're evaluating yours against somebody else's before they ever talk to anybody at your company or any other company, maybe. 
or, or you know they're looking to kick out a vendor that's already there because they're unhappy with them. So they you know they know what the problems are, and you need to come up with the, for the case of the video, you need to come up with a way of presenting the problem that is very economical in terms of the viewer's time. That's the toughest commodity to be able to, uh, to, to get, as people are not necessarily paying with dollars anymore, they're paying with minutes of attention, and Google knows if you're watching, uh, whether it's a search <laughs> result or whether it's a video, and if you back button out of there, they're keeping track of those signals and, and goodbye ranking. They, they, you know, they're, very, they're obsessed about that user experience because the more time you spend on the page, the more time you spend watching videos, the more they can sell uh, ad revenue against it. <laughs> Well, we don't care about their ad revenue, uh, but we do care about you know whether somebody watches the video. Now, in terms of you know, a lot of, when I say video is video, you know that's true, I guess. But on the other hand, these B two B technology videos, you, I think it's safe to assume a certain amount of interest to start with on the uh, you know on the viewers' part. So I don't worry too much about. You know, grabbing somebody's attention or having a big, you know, a big production number at the start in order to draw people in. I think that people have drawn themselves in. They clicked on the damn thing, so you know they they clearly are interested in search or because somebody told them that you were a pretty good company. Um, you know, they're already disposed to hear what you have to say. So the important thing is just to be polite and uh, informative. Do you ever get anyone that comes to you that wants you to create something that can go viral? And if they did, you know, what do you tell them? Um, we tell them that we don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody else does either. Really. Um, sure, there, there's, there's often the hope that something will, will go viral, and there's often the hope that something will be widely shared. Um, and, you know, that's... I guess okay. I don't. I don't know. If it's the most important thing. I think the most important thing is, you know, not views. I some we went to a breakfast last week, and the speakers told us a story of a company that had a video with two million views. I said, "Wow!" And six. Is it that you want from your video? You know, do you want people to be entertained, or do you want them to do the next thing that? on your list of things they should do. So they had two million views and only six people clicked through to the, the yeah. yeah. They didn't ask them to do anything is yeah. the point. They didn't say, uh, you know, they didn't tell them what to do. Like, you know, download our white paper or, you know, at least get more information here. It was sort of just entertaining. Do you see any particularly cool use cases going on with explainer videos and email marketing or explainer videos and marketing automation? Well, I don't really know a damn thing about marketing automation, um, but you do, right? Um, the, I, I think the most interesting thing coming up is the, I don't know how new it is, but the, the ability to actually put a call to action in your video. You know, you look at and we, we've just getting started doing this, but there are for imposing on your video on YouTube, uh, you know, an actual, you know, contact us now or, you know, download our white paper to put that right on the video. So typically in the past, we've always put call to action at the end of a video, which is good. Um, but it, it's hard to make it very specific. I mean, it, it's technically the, the problem is we, we started out doing stuff in Flash, right? In Flash, you can put interactive buttons and so forth. It's an interactive, uh, it's interactive software, but it, uh, since they, the Adobe people don't seem to be get able to get along with Apple people, uh, as more stuff gets viewed on, um, uh, you know, on tablets and iPhones and so forth, then it can't... Uh, you know, flash doesn't work. So, what do you do with just a plain old video that's on, that's being on YouTube or Vimeo or even on your website? It's not interactive. Um, you can surround it with calls to action, which is a good idea. Um, but you, the video itself, when you click on it, nothing happens. 
So now you can put an overlay on that video and make something happen um, or you know, tell a person what would be a good thing to do next. Uh, you know, if you've got to a point and you want to see more like this, uh, as you watch, as you go through the video, would you, you know, are you interested in this? You could bail out of it and so forth. That's, so that's uh, fairly new and it's pretty interesting. You know, we're seeing some interesting use cases with uh, Wistia that does that now where they can embed uh, CTAs and put turnstiles in where you have to uh, provide your email address to watch the rest of a video. There's there'll be a lot of interesting things happening with integration and getting uh, leads directly into a CRM system for sales follow-up. Everyone's yep, yep. Put, pushing to be able to measure the impact of, of video. Another um, use case I think is interesting that I don't we I, I talk about it a lot and I don't see people doing it but I don't understand why so I'll tell you what it is um, there are you know some of our clients are like third-party service providers to people like managed service providers and they have they offer a thousand services or you know they offer every possible service that a service provider could want right so they they have these excellent demos of different segments of their software uh, or their their service that you know it's got an interface so here's the you know user interface and those demos go on for 20 minutes 25 minutes and they're they're good and they're exactly what a person wants to know who's ready for a demo but this is what they don't do they also have another section of their website that lists features as you know, this video, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, and those lists may go on forever. Why you don't take that long video and break it up into pieces that are associated with those features? This seems obvious to me that you know because you know video is a good thing, and so here's 30 sec. It's like you know you got an uh, frequently asked questions, uh, and if you have some video with an answer to one of those questions, why don't you put it there? Um, and because of all of those wonderful things that video is supposed to do for your, you know, search engine rankings and, you know, 85% of people who click on a video buy the thing. You know, you see all these wonderful stats put up by video people all over the Internet, but they, there's certainly something there. I mean, video is definitely an important addition to anybody's content because it's just, uh, you know, stuff people understand. So it's interesting. It almost seems like if you think about a webinar being something that someone's going to sit down and have to plan to watch 30, 60 minutes. If that webinar is answering 10 different FAQs, you can chop it up in two or three minute videos, embed them, and instead of it becoming a planned activity, it's now like an impulse buy. So yeah, they're, buying, they're buying with their attention and they'll make an impulse decision to watch it on the spot as opposed to bookmarking it and maybe coming back, maybe not. Well, right, because you, you know, <laughs> you must have. I can't imagine anybody watching this who hasn't sat through a webinar. Jeez, oh man! You know, they got, oh, when are they going to stop introducing themselves? I read that, yeah. you know? uh, and it's why. And if you're only interested in, I mean, you know, everybody. You have a lot of people say you're a product, and you have. In order to sell it, you have to convince ten people on a buying team. That uh, it's you know something they should pay attention to. Each one has a different interest. So to the extent that you could chapterize your video, uh, your long demo video, or whatever else you've got. Um, when we do two-minute videos, there's often 30 seconds of that is screen grabs. It's there with the because you know the, well this is a, a real product and you want the viewer to say geez, I'd really like to be able to do that, uh, or, you know, that's really easy to use, or whatever point you're trying to make, but you, you, you try to tell a little story with a bunch of screen grabs. It's not like a demo. It's sort of like, you know, here's how to drill down to the root mean cause, and that's what it looks like. So that 30 seconds can be excerpted from that two-minute video and used somewhere else. And then when we look at it is, okay, now if we take a text transcript of that and we put that on the same web page, so now Google knows what's in the video and can send more search love our way. Yeah, that's something that we should do more of and encourage. I mean, not us 
as us necessarily, but we should encourage our clients to do more of. We, we, we're really more on the production side than on the, um, you know, here's how to do your marketing, which we never tell people what, how to do it. <laughs> So the final question I wanted to close with today is, let's say you get a, a phone call from someone who is just appointed uh, CMO or marketing director and they got promoted very rapidly because of a gap in the organization. They're not terribly seasoned. What's the biggest advice you'd offer to that person who's planning their first video project that hasn't been through this before? Let's um, talk to the people in sales who actually talk to your customers and Let's find out what they say. What kind of stories do they, what kind of anecdotes do they have? What kind of war stories can they share with us to give us a feel for how to tell our video story, tell our story in video, in a short video? I would really like to get, talk to people who are close to the customer because, uh, you know, I don't think a video isn't really the way we go, but it's not really messaging. You know, we messaging tends to be, oh, yeah, we want people to know this. We want them to know this. We want them. No, we, we want them to call us, call us up. Or, you know, so what can we say that's going to get them to respond? And the salespeople know, you know, you can't take everybody at lunch. So they, they know other ways. Excellent. Um, so, Bruce, what's the best way for somebody to reach out to you? I know we originally connected on LinkedIn, so that's probably as good a way as any for someone to start a conversation with you. But what are some of the other best uh, best ways for people to get in touch with you and Laura? Well, they can uh, write to us. <laughs> I'm Bruce at twominuteexplainer.com. They can call us up. Do you want to give your phone number? Sure, feel free. 212 477 4288. Those are probably the easiest, way to, easiest ways to reach us. And the website is twominuteexplainer.com? <laughs> twominuteexplainer.com, sure. Twominuteexplainer.com. So. I've been speaking today with Bruce McKenzie of uh, TwoMinuteExplainer.com, business information graphics in New York City. We've been talking about all about using video to get better marketing results. Thanks so much for joining me today, Bruce. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Nice talking with you. Bye-bye. Nice talking with you as well. Take care now. Thank you for listening to this episode of the IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast. If you learned something valuable from today's episode, please search for the IT Channel Inbound Marketing Podcast in the iTunes Podcast Directory and give us a five-star rating. To get access to past episodes and be notified about upcoming episodes, be sure to visit www.sphomerun.com forward slash podcast. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you back again next time. Take care now.